So here we're asked to find the centroid of a region bounded by two curves. Um, so first we need to know what is the centroid. Um, the centroid I have written up here is the center of mass of an object of uniform density. So if you want to think about this, you could think about if you had a plate um, and you wanted to balance it, say, on like a marker or a pen. Um, you would need to find the position in that plate um, that would let you balance it equally. That would be the centroid of the plate, assuming the plate has uniform density, um, which is what we're assuming for this problem. Um, and so here we're given two curves, y equals x squared and x equals y squared. Um, and we want to find the in this region between these two curves, the place where if we had a, a shape, um, like a physical shape, we could balance it on something like a pen or a marker. Um, so to do that, we need these two formulas that the book has given us. Um, it tells us that the centroid occurs at the point x bar, y bar, and then it gives us formulas for how to calculate x bar and y bar. And so x bar is 1 over a, a stands for area um, of the integral from a to b of x times f of x minus g of x. Now this is because we're dealing with two curves. Um, so we're labeling one curve f of x, one curve g of x. Um, and then y bar is equal to 1 over the area times the integral from a to b of 1 half times fx squared minus g, g of x squared dx. Um, so before we start just calculating these points, we need to find what the area of this region is. Uh, and so to do that, um, we're going to think about uh, what the region looks like. Um, and so we've got the two curves y equals x squared, which is just our ba basic uh, parabola. And then x equals y squared is if we took this parabola and rotated it 90 degrees clockwise, that's what it would look like. Um, and so we get uh, this region here, um, and we want to know a couple of things in order to find the area. Um, we'll use our usual method of imagining that there are a bunch of infinitesimally thick rectangles uh, between this curve, and we'll sum them all up. Um, and so we want to think about this individual rectangle. Its width is going to be dx, but what is its height? Um, and so if we look at what these curves are, its height will be um, the square root of x. Um, if we solve this uh, equation for y to make it into a function, um, then the top point of the rectangle is at um, the square root of x, and the bottom point of the rectangle is at x squared. And so um, to set up the area, let's go ahead and do that, the area we're going to integrate over these little rectangles. And so we're going to have the integral of, um, and we're going to want, um, so if we label this top portion, that, that will be the square root of x minus x squared. That's going to give us the height of this rectangle. And then dx gives us the width of the rectangle. And then um, for the bounds for finding this area, we're going to look at where these um, parabolas intersect, and they intersect at the origin, and they intersect at the point 1, 1, and so our x values are from 0 to 1. And so that's how we're going to find the area. Now, actually, integrating this is not going to be too bad. Um, so if we go ahead and find a from 0 to 1, oh, sorry, <laughs> we can go ahead and integrate this without doing anything. So we have... Um, the integral of this is 2 thirds x to the 3 halves minus uh, 1 third x cubed evaluated from 0 to 1. And if we plug things in and evaluate it, we get 1 third. So our area is 1 third. So now that we know our area, we can go ahead and do this. Uh, other integrals to get x bar and y bar. So first, let's calculate x bar. It's going to be 1 over a, so 1 over 1 third is just 3, times the integral uh, from a to b. Again, we get our bounds from where uh, these two curves intersect, and so it's going to be from 0 to 1. 
of x times f of x minus g of x. And so here we're just labeling the top curve as f of x and the bottom curve as g of x. And that should be pretty intuitive based on the picture. Um, so we have the square root of x minus x squared dx. Um, and so we have 3 times integral from 0 to 1 of x to the 3 halves minus x cubed dx. And so now we can integrate this. And we get uh, 3 times um, 2 fifths x to the 5 halves minus um, 1 fourth x to the fourth power evaluated from 0 to 1. Uh, and so if we evaluate this, we end up getting 3 times. So we plug in 1, we get 2 fifths minus 1 fourth, and then plugging in 0 just gets us 0. And so we should end up getting um, 9 twentieths. Okay, so now we've found what x bar is, now we'll work on finding y bar. So y bar is going to be, again, 1 over a, so our a is 1 third, 1 over 1 third ends up being 3 times the integral from 0 to 1. Again, our bounds come from the intersects of the curves. Um, of the integral of 1 half times f of x squared. So again, f of x is our top curve. So that's going to be the square root of x. Um, so the square root of x squared is x, so times x, minus g of x squared. So that's going to be our bottom curve, which is x squared x squared squared is x to the fourth dx. Uh, and so we can take out the one half since it's a constant and we can go ahead and integrate this quite easily. We get uh, one half x squared minus one fifth x to the fifth evaluated from zero to one. And so we get 3 halves times, if we plug in 1, we get 1 half minus 1 fifth, and then plugging in 0 just gives us 0 for both terms. Um, and if we do this, then we have um, 5 minus 2 over 10, so 3 over 10 times 3 halves, and so we should get 9 twentieths. And lastly, we want to make sure whenever there's a word problem and they're asking us to give them something that we write the answer in the form that they're asking for. So they're asking for the centroid. So the centroid, again, is this point x bar, y bar. So we want to write that the centroid is the point 9 twentieths over 9 twentieths. And you'll notice that this is on the line y equals x, which kind of runs down the center of this region, um, this line y equals x. And it makes sense that your point, if, if, we, if this is, has uniform density and we're balancing it, that the point we're balancing it, it on would run through that center line. So um, you'll want to think about your answer if it makes sense for what you get at the end. If it's some point like the tip over here, that's, that's probably not going to make very much sense um, if we're assuming uniform density. So again, the difficulty on these sorts of problems is just the setup. The book gives us um, the equations for what these points should equal, but we need to um, be able to determine uh, which curves um, we're using for our f of x and g of x, and we need to be able to find the area.